Good morning, everyone, and welcome. We welcome all those gathered here at 1700 Missoula, all those participating on live stream, and for Logan and Kennedy Johnson, a special welcome to you and your family this day as you will be receiving Jesus in Holy Communion for the very first time. We have much to celebrate this day as we begin with the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the kingdom of God, success means being a servant. For the times we have sought to be served rather than to serve, we ask mercy. Lord Jesus, you fed the hungry, you healed the brokenhearted. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you gave strength to the weary and brought peace to the worried. Christ, have mercy. Christ. Lord Jesus, you comforted the afflicted and lifted those who were bowed down. Lord, have mercy. Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you. We adore you. Lord, we give you thanks for your Let us pray. O oh God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that in loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass human desire through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just. For my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who joined themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer 
for all peoples. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed in order that by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Behold, a Canaanite woman from that district came and called out, Have pity on me, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. His disciples came and asked, Send her away, for she keeps calling after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. And she said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the tables of their masters. And then in reply, Jesus said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. What makes a success? There are many ways to look at it. In fact, looking at it is one way to succeed. First, the long-term vision, the dream, the goal, the mission. Second, our focus on the task at hand, the everyday responsibilities, the marks we have to meet, the objective, while keeping in mind that big picture, that vision. This is what Jesus did. His long-term vision His mission, what his life was all about, is our salvation. His everyday focus was announcing the inbreaking of the kingdom of God through his own actions, demonstrating himself as the Messiah for which Israel long awaited those actions. The blind regain their sight, the deaf hear, the lame walk, the mute speak, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news preached to them. Even in a foreign land, some sought Jesus, like the Canaanite woman, we hear of this day, without any connection to the tradition of the Israelites, she addresses Jesus with one of those titles ascribed to the Messiah, Son of David. Jesus recognizes her, recognizes her faith, her faith in him. We hear him at first speaking in a harsh way. It was the manner of the day. Jews and Gentiles did not get along by any measure. And their own traditions would have ordinarily kept Jesus and this Canaanite woman apart. Still, 
it is noticeable that Jesus is even speaking with her, a woman not of his family, and a Gentile to boot. Jesus recognized her faith. In his own land, he met resistance from religious leaders. That is what caused him to flee. But in this pagan land, he meets a person of faith in him. Clearly, something new is happening. The old era is passing away. The kingdom of God Jesus ushers in is open to all people of faith. The disciples would have to open their minds, change their hearts to put aside the anti-pagan attitudes that were part of their culture. Recall Paul's ministry to the Gentiles. He met opposition from the other apostles, including St. Peter. In the kingdom of God, where God's ways become our ways, barriers are broken down. There are no longer insiders and outsiders. Societies down through the centuries have had their own particular opposition to groups of people simply because they're different. In our own day, we see populations kept down for generations. Notably, people of First Nations, even here in the Mountain West, Reservations keep people out of sight and out of mind. We see also laments, very unfortunate laments by some over what has been called the browning of America, by those who feel in some way uncomfortable, even us unjustifiably threatened at the prospect of those descended from European ancestors no longer constituting a clear majority of the general population. The pleas of the Canaanite woman are echoed in the calls for racial justice in our day. How do, we, how do we regard or disregard people we see as different? People who don't look like us, act like us, speak our language, believe the way we do, live the way we do. Jesus never told us that we were going to have to like everyone. He told us to love one another. Now, I know that sounds terribly trite, but it does contain a profound challenge. The challenge is to get past our judgments, our fears, that we might see others as people who are loved by God unconditionally, with no regard for how they look or speak or live or believe. We have barriers to cross, and they are all of our own making. Jesus found faith in a pagan land, unimaginable. What surprises will await us when we go beyond our comfort zone, when we stop demanding that people conform to our expectations, when we stop making of ourselves the standard for the entire world. 
what makes a success. There are many ways to look at it. In fact, looking at it is one way to succeed. Looking at the ministry of Jesus, his big vision is, of course, our salvation. His immediate focus is showing people day by day what it means to live in the kingdom of God, what it means to accept the Father's will, what it means to let God rule our hearts, our minds, guiding our choices, our decisions. Our success means making his daily focus living in the kingdom of God, our big vision, what drives our lives. So then our immediate focus would be the ongoing conversion of our own hearts, which can make this possible. Tearing down barriers, allowing the call of our faith and the practice of our religion to open us, to challenge us, Never to isolate us with the false comfort of elitism, which can become an idol in itself. Those who are called to the Easter sacraments each year at our Easter Vigil, are referred to as the elect, not the elite. In baptism, we are all called to the grace of the sacrament and a life lived in Christ. Very special. And it makes us no more special than anyone else. What it does make us is their servant. And that is the way a disciple spells success. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father
Let us pray that God will bring success to the work of our hands as we lift up our prayer. We pray for the church. May we and all the baptized answer the call to serve as faithful stewards of God's gifts. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all the world. May peace, born of justice, inform and inspire the work of all who lead peoples and nations. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our country and all who call it home. May we be healed of all that divides us and united in our efforts to stem the tide of COVID-19. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all who are marginalized, disenfranchised, voiceless, and victimized. May they be restored and respected as children of God. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all who celebrate the sacraments of Christian initiation this summer. For all who have received confirmation and First Communion, and for those who have been fully initiated, may they be faithful servants. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all who are impacted by the present pandemic including all who are sick or quarantined, health care providers and first responders, those who have lost work, all whose businesses are challenged, all who are afraid, and all whose loved ones have died. May they be strengthened in hope. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all who experience homelessness. May they live in safety as they strive for sustainable independence. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all who have died, in particular Ray Holmes for whom our Mass is offered. And we also pray by name for Bernice Stetzner, as well as for all throughout the world who have died with COVID-19. May they rest in the peace of God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Gracious God, may our service give you glory as it serves the common good. Hear us as we pray through Christ, who is Lord, forever and ever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord. Be. 
Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may receive your very self through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty. It is our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin that you might see and love in us all that you see and love in your Christ, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the company of heaven, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. Make holy then these gifts, we pray. Send your spirit upon them that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, <clears throat> he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many, for forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life. We offer you the chalice of salvation. We offer you thanks and praise that you've gathered us here, calling us worthy to be in your presence, worthy to serve you, worthy to serve your people. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis, our Pope, with Austin Anthony, our Bishop, the clergy, the religious, and all the lay faithful, the entire people your son has gained for you. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. All who have died in your mercy, welcome to the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and saints who have done your will throughout the ages, we too may be co-heirs to eternal life to praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look, then, not on our sins, but rather on our faith as your church, and grant us this peace, your peace, and unity in accord with your will as you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not going to do this. 
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may also be his co-heirs in heaven, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Continued thanks to all in our parish who coordinate and make possible the live stream of our ministry for the benefit now of all those who are taking good care of themselves at home and moving into the future for the benefit of all who, who may be sick, may be unaway, may be away and find masks unavailable, and for the benefit of all who, for whatever reason, may not be here. This is why our blessing is not just for us at the conclusion of Mass, but for all. For all who may not be here because of feelings of estrangement. For all who may not be here because they struggle with their faith. Everyone is welcome, and we must never forget any. I hope that you have been reading the Parish Bulletin each week, either on the website or receiving it by email or by postal mail. You know that I write a letter for every publication of the bulletin. This week, in the latter pages of it, there are two articles. One of them ran on Monday, I think, in the Independent Record. It's on the, the primacy of public health during the time of a pandemic. Uh, the other was submitted. It hasn't been run. If it does, I don't know. But it's on considering a pandemic kind of the way we consider a forest fire. If that piques your curiosity, I hope that you read it. I write these and really all of the letters in order to invite thought and reflection as we live our lives as disciples, striving to build the kingdom of God, to make the best of choices that would give glory to God by, by serving the common good, the good of our sisters and brothers. Our Mass schedule does remain the same these days. Our Zoom community nights on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. continue. This year, the Sun Life event for the benefit of youth ministry in the Diocese of Helena will be a virtual event. The Subaru raffle is still part of it, and you can stop by the office during the week to purchase a raffle ticket or tickets. And the office is open on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 11 till 1.30. If that time doesn't work, just give a call, and I'm sure we can work something out. All are welcome to help with harvesting crops in our Jubilee Garden for the benefit of Helena Food Share. Uh, this afternoon, late in the afternoon, it's going to be very hot, but right now it's beautiful, and this would be a good time to pitch in. And we are accepting every week non-perishable donations as we get an early start on our Thanksgiving outreach. And praise God and thank you for the masks, for the clean hands, for the social distance, all done with a great sense of responsibility for the well-being, not only of ourselves, but mostly one another. Thank God for the sense to know that this responsibility, at this time, just takes precedence, even over the rights and the freedoms which we cherish and so enjoy. In order to enjoy those rights and freedoms, we need to be healthy. We need to be alive. Thank you, and praise God. And, Logan and Kennedy, congratulations to you as you share fully in our Eucharist. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, bless us all, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We go in peace. Thanks be to God.